fucking huge for me. Good dunked! Lilia is a champion that had a bit of a quiet release. As a playstyle, she's very unique, which has given us some problems in popularity and win rate. However, in pro play, it's been a completely different story. Lilia has become a high priority pick in pro leagues, having a 66.7% presence in the LEC Summer Playoffs, with some teams attempting to grab the strong pick for themselves, and others just trying to deny it from either team getting it. Yankos is a perfect example of a pro who has been spamming Lilia preparing for Worlds, and so I thought I would analyse a ton of his games and show you how he plays it. I have a feeling we're going to see more of Lilia at Worlds, with the regions that know how to play it getting a big advantage in drafts. This, as well as the item changes coming up in preseason, which will allow AP Bruiser Lilia to become viable, means that Lilia is for sure a champion worth learning and worth spamming at the moment. Quickly before we start, if you like these kinds of pro analysis videos, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more, and like the video if you enjoy. Anyway, back to Yankos. Yankos has a very specific Lilia jungle path he always follows. Starting on Raptors, he wards the river to prevent invades. He only does this against the enemy junglers who can invade, so for example if the enemy is an Amumu, he saves it for later, but if it is an Nidalee or a Lee Sin, for example, he'll always ward. For Raptors, he always does three Qs while kiting and auto-attacking the big Raptor. This is enough to kill all the small ones with the burn damage from Lilia passive and finish off the big one. For Red, he continues kiting the buff, auto-attacking between his skills. Same thing for Wolves, again trying to maintain high HP, kiting with Lilia's movement speed. And again, the same thing for Blue Buff, kiting it all the way around the area he can, using as much of the space he can to stay high HP. He levels up Q again at level 3, saving E for level 4, as Q is Lilia's best and most important ability early game. She's a squishy champion who needs to be cautious early game, and Q is perfect for that, as leveling it up increases the movement speed it gives. At this point, Yankos can either look for a gank or do scuttle crab. He does the same path on the other side of the map, pathing towards bot lane for an early gank. Raptors, red, wolves, thoughts is blue, and then he notices a fight is happening bot lane, so he rushes it quickly and immediately goes down, picking up first blood. He has a few other variations of this clear you can use to get an advantage over the enemy jungler. One is starting on the enemy's raptors, stealing their red buff, with a ward in the bush by raptors for safety. This is an unexpected path for pretty much any jungler. Most don't even know that Lilia starts on raptors, rather than a buff. At higher levels, a play like this may be expected, but Yankos can get away with it, even in Challenger. Early game pathing is always a mind game for junglers, and Yankos is an expert at winning this mind game. He often even fits in a level 2 gank mid, right after red buff, which ideally gets a free kill, a summon a spell that he can return gank later, or at least gets a lot of damage on the enemy and forces them out of lane. He can then return to the other side of his jungle and finish off the clear. The difference between a new Lilia player and an expert like Yankos is the way they use Lilia's abilities. There are some very important parts to Lilia's skills that go unnoticed if you don't have many games on the champion. Firstly, Lilia's passive. All of her abilities apply magic damage burn that does 5% of the target's max health over 3 seconds. This is one of the main reasons why Lilia's jungle clear involves so much kiting, as each ability is constantly burning monsters, so she can still be doing damage even while running away. This is the same for champions, so you don't need to be constantly hitting skills on Lilia, as hitting one skill and kiting back will still mean that enemies are taking damage. If you add Lilia's Q onto this, you can see why Yankos plays Lilia in such a specific way. Lilia Q has another very important passive, which is a stackable movement speed buff whenever she hits an enemy with an ability. This movement speed is why Yankos is able to zoom in and out of fights consistently, with each stack giving a bonus percentage movement speed buff that also scales with your AP. Yankos is constantly using this passive, and even optimizes it so that whenever a camp is low HP, he waits and lands one extra Q on the camp, so he preserves the movement speed stacks, ready to look for a gank. This gives Lilia much more safety when checking the river for the enemy jungler or engaging a fight, and is almost necessary for a Lilia expert to maximise the effectiveness of the champion. Another fact about the Q is that similar to Darius, you want to be hitting enemies with the outer ring of the ability. The outer ring does bonus true damage compared to the area on top of Lilia's body, which is actually a huge difference in damage, especially in a fight where you're hitting multiple Qs on multiple enemies. Similar to this, Lilia W also has an effect that does more damage depending on where it hits. However, it's the opposite to the Q. Lilia W does a 200% increased damage if you hit the center of the ability. It's a very small area to hit, but is worth practicing due to the damage increase. This is the most 
relevant when comboed with Lilia ultimate, the sleep, and you don't want to be lazy when you're trying to land the W afterwards. On a slip target, always try and land the center right on them. If you're playing Lilia and you never seem to do any damage, but the enemy Lilia is always one-shotting champions, then this is the reason why they're landing it in the center. A quick secret tip with Lilia W, it is a dash, but it's not meant to go through walls. However, it actually can dash through certain walls around the map. It's mainly useful on corners of small walls, such as the ones in the jungle, where Lilia can get a longer than expected jump to surprise enemies. It can even be used on the barren walls to get a surprise engage on enemies that have no vision inside the pit. These jumps do feel quite hard to pull off, but with some practice in a custom game, they become easy to replicate and could become very useful for an expert Lilia player, just like how Riven players use their Q to engage over walls. Lilia E is an underrated ability that I believe even pros have not fully mastered. Yankos uses it well to set up ganks, trying to throw it from out of vision, even over walls, to a position behind the enemy laner, where he thinks they will run to. If he's correct, then this means they'll be hit by the ball, slowed, and also would be set up for a sleep with the ultimate. However, the skill is also vital for Lilia to check for enemies in Fog of War. There are a few different strategies from Practice Tool where Lilia can check Baron and Dragon from long distances. These allow her to be completely safe and throw the ability into the choke points of the objectives to gain vision on any enemies that are doing the objectives. Lilia E can even be carefully positioned from inside the jungle to just make it through the small gaps in the walls to check objectives from an even safer location. Due to the E's long range, it can even be used for long range snipe ganks, where you get in any open spot, put your cursor over where you think the enemy champion will be in a few seconds, and toss it from a long distance. Lilia R has a global range, and so does the E, so you can land asleep on a carry bot lane, even from mid lane, and be setting kills up for your team without even being there. It's a very low risk gank, you don't even have to show up or waste any time, you just throw it there. So even though it's very hard to hit, it doesn't really matter if you miss, and if you do hit it, then your team's going to be very impressed. Finally, Lilia R. This is the main reason Yankos is playing Lilia, and the main reason she gets picked in pro play. The ability of a champion to sleep a whole enemy team has absolutely crazy potential, and I don't think we've even seen it used to its full extent yet. Just like any sleep ability, not only does it put them to sleep for 2-3 to three seconds, it also slows enemies for 1.5 seconds after casting, where they become drowsy. This can be up to a 4.5 second window for you to reposition and set up for a huge damage dunk with Lilia W, as well as the rest of your team. The sleep also does extra magic damage if the enemy is woken with an ability, so this is why it feels like Lilia does so much damage. For his build, Yankos starts Hunter's Talisman and Refillable Pot. For his first base, he goes Fiendish Codex as soon as possible for the extra AP. Runic Echo jungle item is the next thing he gets. After this he grabs boots and he decides which ones he wants each game, getting Merc Dreads versus high CC enemy teams and Ninja Tabai versus high AD enemy teams. He also gets boots of swiftness in some games if he has an early lead and wants to keep snowballing it, not needing the safety of the other boots. Leandries is always the next item, the burn on it is amazing with Lilia's passive and her CC. Next you buy Zonyas for the safety. Banshee's Veil after that, again to keep Lilia safe in a fight. And for a final item, Yankos doesn't really ever get Death Cap or any other high AP items as he already has enough damage. He prefers something like Dead Man's Plate or Rayalize to solidify his movement speed advantage. He does sometimes get Void Staff if the enemies have high magic resist tanks, but otherwise a safety item may be better. For runes there are two different pages, each with their own advantages. Yankos says that you should take the Dark Harvest page in solo queue if you're looking to get kills early and snowball the game and win. However, there's also the phase rush page, which is the more common one for pro players, as it's the more consistent one, he says. So the Dark Harvest page, maybe better for solo queue, involves Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter, as well as Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking for secondaries. They normally take Adaptive, Adaptive, and Armor for stats, just to maximize their damage early game. The Phase Rush page, on the other hand, is Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, and Cheap Shot, Ravenous Hunter for secondaries. Yankos takes Attack Speed, Adaptive, and Armor for this page, which lets him be higher health in the jungle, but gives him slightly less early game damage for his abilities. Give them both a try in solo queue, you might find that you just enjoy the Phase Rush one more, because it's more consistent, and the movement speed is always nice. You're still going to have lots of damage. Lilia is certainly an underplayed champion, considering the strength of her kit, and especially her ultimate. In a way, she's similar to Oriana, where her basic abilities may not seem too special, but one good ultimate can win the game by itself. If you want to see more videos like this, about learning champions from pro players, make sure to subscribe. I also do lots of videos about unique solo queue strategies that people have used to climb to Challenger, so make sure to check those out. Like the video if you enjoyed, and thanks so much for watching.